Namaste. So, lately I've been contemplating the fourth part or fourth pada of the fourth chapter, the last chapter of the Brahma Sutra, and of course Shankara's commentary on that. And this is the Pala Shruti. At the end of every great scripture or every great prayer in the Vedic tradition, there's a section called Phala. Phala means fruit. So in other words, that section describes the fruit of studying or practicing or worshiping in the manner described in that particular Shastra. So in Brahma Sutra also, the result of realizing Brahman, either Saguna Brahman, conditioned Brahman with qualities, or Nirguna Brahman, without qualities. Either way, one is released from the material world. This is called moksha, liberation. And it means no more birth and death, no more suffering, no more conditioned existence. Oh, but it means so much more than that. This is not well known <clears throat> because most people never make it to the end of the Brahma Sutras. <laughs> Lately, we have uh, worked on a series here on the beginning of the first chapter of the, the first pada and the first adhikaranas of the Brahma Sutra. And that in itself is a great study, which can take many years to actually realize. But once one realizes Brahman, and for me that happened back in 1984, when conditioned Brahman, uh, Shakti in the form of the goddess, came to me and blessed me, gave me Shaktipat. And at that point I realized Brahman and my liberation was guaranteed. Since that time, of course, I haven't stopped. I'm still studying, still meditating, and still contemplating the works that describe this liberation. And Shankaracharya has been a wonderful inspiration and source of wisdom in this area, even for me. So you should also study Brahma Sutra and Shankaracharya's commentaries on it and the Upanishads on which it is based. So then what are the great, wonderful, I mean, inconceivable benefits of this realization? Well, it's described that one becomes an independent sovereign. A sovereign means a king, an authority, one who has power. One might say, well, there's all kinds of opportunities for attaining power in this material world. But power in the material world is the booby prize. Huh? <laughs> in school, for those of you who aren't American, in school, there is a, a prize for the kids that lose a competition. So they don't feel bad. Huh? In other words, there's the first prize, the winner, and maybe a second prize and third prize. And then all the losers get what's called the booby prize. So <laughs> in spiritual life, sovereignty or rulership or control or mastery or ownership of the material world is the booby prize. Because why? The material world is called Martya Loka, meaning the place of death. So would you want to be the king of a cremation ground 
Huh? Would you want to be the ruler of a cemetery? <laughs> That's the status of the rulers of the material world. I think it was John Steinbeck who wrote this novel about these kids who got shipwrecked and uh, cast away on a desert island, tropical island of some kind. And basically they divided into two camps, the rats and the flies. And the supreme leader was called the Lord of the Flies. <laughs> So being the master of the material world is like being the lord of the flies. Huh? What are flies? They're scavengers. They're dirty, nasty. They spread filth and disease. They live on cast-offs and carry on decaying things. Huh? And this is the truth of the material world. The material world is all temporary. It lives for some time and then it dies. Every material body, even the emperor of the world, is subject to these same problems. So there is no such thing as absolute sovereignty in the material world. After all, God is already the master of the material world. The first mantra of Ishopanishad, begins, Isha Vasya Midam Sarvam. That Isha, the controller, Shiva, is already the master and owner of the material world. So you can't become a competitor of Shiva. <laughs> you will lose. <laughs> His power extends even beyond this world. So there's no... Uh, incentive, really, to become a ruler or a sovereign in this world. Actually, to master this world means to be able to hold it uh, away, to be able to keep it at bay, to be able to stop it from disturbing our contemplation of Brahman. Now, of course, for those who realize the unconditioned Brahman, the Nirguna Brahman, there is no afterlife. There is no enjoyment, no sovereignty, or nothing like that. They go directly to the unconditioned, and they merge into it, become one with it, which is the all, which is everything. But those who realize the conditioned Brahman go to the Shakti Loka, the pure creation, where all the beings are self-realized, where everyone is a loving servant of God and goddess. And in that world, which is infinite and extensible and mutable to any degree, one can expand into many bodies. This is all described in Vedanta Sutra. Really, you should read it. <laughs> He expands into many bodies. He becomes two and four and eight and 16 and so on. He becomes hundreds. He becomes thousands. And he enjoys in any way that he likes. Basically, one creates one's own reality, of which one is the master. Yes, it's all an illusion, but at least it's an illusion that's under our control. One who attains self-realization realizes all mystical powers, up to but not including the creation, maintenance, and disappearance of the material world itself. That is retained by Shiva alone. And uh, the ability to grant liberation but other than that, he's perfectly willing to share his powers with those who are pure-minded, pure-hearted, realized, huh? because they're lovers and they are full of wisdom, full of beauty and renunciation. 
So the various religious and spiritual traditions of the world have different visions of the afterlife. But only in the Advaita vision, the vision of Brahma Sutra, the vision of Kevala Advaita philosophy of Shankaracharya, is the liberated one granted full freedom, autonomy, independent mastery of the higher creation. Why is this? Because he does not disagree in any way with the opinions of God. He is not a rebel in any way. Uh, he is not a separate master. He is a cooperating master. So in this way, one can earn, can be granted independent sovereignty in the spiritual world. And this is the actual aim of this whole spiritual path. And anybody who settles for less is simply cheating themselves. So don't settle for less. Aim for the highest. Study the Brahma Sutra. Learn all the methods of the Upanishads. Realize the higher consciousness of Brahman. Earn the blessings of Shakti and Shiva. And go on to an eternal life of bliss and knowledge. Aum Tat Sat. Aum Shakti Aum. Aum Namah Shivaya.